all the binaries for all the systems that we support, but more on this later. And the uh, one before last is Nix OS. It's a Nix Linux distribution built using Nix um, toolset. And the reason why this was then created, uh, kind of moved into the distribution as a whole, was because um, once you're only plugging into a distribution uh, using Nix on top of Debian or whatever, you can only go as far. Uh, you can only go as far as some, some distance, and but then you really need to take control of the whole system configuration and so on. We'll be talking more about that, and then Nix Ops. Uh, which is like the name inspires of DevOps, so developers who also do system administration, which is most of the developers nowadays. Um, it's a tool to deploy on physical or cloud-based um, machines, uh, so basically a deployment tool, uh, which kind of helps to um, manage your uh, deployments. Um, so Nix the package manager, right? Um, so I'll just go tr quickly through all the features it has, and then w we'll later talk why are they so important. First, it's the portability. Um, Nix uh, should run on most Unix-like systems. This includes any Linux, any FreeBSD, um, any uh, OS. X, um, so Apple, and also it should also work on Windows using Sigwin. So you have one package, package manager that can actually run on all devices and you don't really have to um, uh, worry about um, which system are you choosing, right? Um, then multiple versions. Uh, you can install multiple versions of the same program or variants of the same program. So for example, you can install Python with support for, um, with support for uh, SSL, or you can also install Python without the support for SSL for whatever reasons. Um, so, and those packages, once you install it, they live side by side on the system uh, without any interfering with, I don't know, as uh, expression is DLL hell that we usually see in, on Windows systems. So when you try to install one program two times, it's kind of messing up everything. Uh, well, with Nix, this is possible. So you can have multiple variants of the same software. Um, where is the mouse? OK. Uh, then complete dependency. Uh, if any of you try to package something for uh, Debian or um, Red Hat, or so you could do binary distributions, right? Uh, the problems that came up, I mean, at least for me when I was doing Debian packaging, was that you, when you define uh, what are the dependencies, uh, you usually you create a build, it, it builds for on your machine, but then when you try to deploy it and use it on some other machines, then you see that actually the whole build dependency was not the complete. It worked on your machine because uh, it found some libraries that you installed, but the whole the build, uh, the whole dependency, uh, w they were not checked if you actually built them. Uh, in Nix, we make sure that when you build something, it's reproducible on another system. And that's because of the reason how it's built. That's why we can guarantee um, uh, this thing. Uh, Multi-user support. So I'm actually not aware if there is any distribution out there. I might be wrong, but uh, at least not any popular distribution uh, of Linux or any other software that would actually allow you, as a user of the system, not as a root user or administrator, to allow you to safely install software, which uh, and not interfere with software that it installs by other user accounts. Uh, so this means you can have like complete separation between users. Um, you can even have more users. So I don't know. I haven't seen anything like this in other uh, distributions. Um, huh. Atomic upgrades and rollbacks. Uh, because how Nix works, it actually means that when you install something, 
um, it, won't, it will not change your system until successfully, uh, uh, until the software is successfully installed. Meaning that if you do an upgrade of your operating system, um, there is in no second, there is, it's in a state where it's not bootable, right? So when you upgrade, upgrades and um, upgrades are safe. So you can actually try to upgrade as much as you want. You will not break your system. Because, and if you do break your system, because sometimes you cannot really check automatically if, um, for example, Firefox really works when you install it. When you see that your upgrade messed up something, there is always a chance that you can roll back to the previous state. Right? So uh, you upgrade. Uh, you don't like what you upgraded to, you can roll back to the previous system. Uh, I know that there are some uh, system, uh, package managers which support that, but their support, I've checked quite a few of them, uh, or is not really, or it's only bind to a certain distribution, but they are not uh, going down to the uh, OS level. Right? So if you depend on some kernel module for whatever reasons, uh, they will not roll back. Um, and then the feature which always surprised me uh, in a positive way, it's binary patching. So when you do an upgrade, usually what happens when you do an upgrade of, uh, my sister is using Ubuntu, so Ubuntu when I do an upgrade for her, it's, it downloads everything and then tries to install. In Nix, we are actually because we know the, the state of our system, and because uh, everything is um, hashed, so you can also tell Hydra, which is our build farm, where we get our binaries from, uh, you can tell, you can get the difference between binary packages, which actually means reducing the upload, uh, the amount of data you need to transfer, or when you're deploying something, it means Changing one line of CSS, it will actually mean this in binary terms, few kilobytes of transferring the data. Right? So you can do deployments really fast because of this. Because usually how, if you want to deploy from one machine, uh, Plone, usually how it happens, you actually connect there and then you download. Because there is no way you could push all, all, of, the, all of the data because pushing every time 300 megabytes when you want to deploy Plone, it's not a feasible option, right? So binary patching, downloading only the difference um, of the uh, program you're upgrading. OK, this pretty much sums up um, what Nix as the package manager does. Oh, where's OK. Um, then Nix, the packages. Uh, since Nix is around for not that long, well, uh, it's been in the beginning uh, a lot in scientific papers and only in the heads of really smart guys, and then they put it on the, and then start developing it and uh, more into uh, in the open. Um, it so Nix packages are uh, we have currently one thousand uh, ten thousand packages which mostly works uh, for everybody. And if we need, we just package them because it's so easy. I mean, uh, in the last year, we gained, uh, I think, around 50 contributors. Um, so we are kind of 100 contributors, but we can be almost, if we continue this road, we'll be in a year in a pair of the of number of packages we can provide with uh, other more popular uh, distributions. Um, then Hydra, the continuous build system. Um, we are currently sharing all the resources uh, of the build. We are building binaries for um, uh, 32 and 64-bit uh, architectures for Linux, for FreeBSD, also about, and I think it's only 32 for SIGWIN for Windows. So when you submit a package, uh, which you add to the Nix packages, and you don't specify which platform this package is for, it will be built, or at least it's going to be tried to be built on all these platforms. Um, so yeah, before building it, of course, you run the test, so you can 
verify that that software you uh, packaging uh, is actually working also. Um, yeah. Then NixOS, um, so the Linux distribution, and why? what's the difference? Why use uh, full-blown uh, Nix experience, right? Uh, so when you're using Nix, you're actually installing only the, uh, the programs. Um, but usually programs, when you're installing, are only halfway, right? You still need to configure them. And it would be nice that when the upgrade of the software comes, you also update the, your configuration. And everybody knows it's hard to keep documentation up to date and um, a configuration always up to date so it, and it, so it doesn't uh, conflict when you upgrade. Um, so the approach NixOS took, um, because of all the Nix property, uh, properties, is we can do declarative, um, uh, uh, declarative uh, configuration of our system. So meaning, what, uh, for example, if there are any Plone guys, um, or any build-out users, it's creating a file where you define, specify what of the uh, software you want to install, and then you say, install this on my system. So in it will go on all the system, it will give you the kernel modules if you really want something uh, specific, uh, you want to go uh, give me specific services, open SSL, able it, and you actually this way you can create um, uh, you can actually specify and version your uh, deployment as well, right? So uh, the next thing is uh, the upgrades you do are reliable. Uh, so uh, it's kind of the feature that comes from um, from uh, Nix because the upgrades. Uh, uh, I mean, the reliable reliable upgrades are actually here in the context of configuration. Because we never overwrite our configuration, we create new configuration and then switch to it, right? So that's why for the uh, uh, that's why we can actually have reliable upgrades, which will never break your system um, or mess up your configuration. Um, then we have also atomic upgrades. Same thing. Uh, you will never have a system which is in a state that is not working that some files get deleted, will never happen with Nix, except if you delete it, of course. Right? Um, rollbacks, you upgrade the system, you don't like it, you can roll back at any time. Even uh, the only thing, if you, for example, change some kernel version, right? so for, for example, my laptop is always running on the latest kernel, uh, just because I have enough time to play with it. and. Um, I always upgrade to the latest, even though I'm in the middle of a conference and I need to work with my laptop. Because if it breaks, I will restart my laptop, and from the Grub menu, I will choose the previous version which was installed. So each time you install something, uh, install, upgrade the, uh, the operating system, you will actually, you, uh, it will add an entry point into the Grub, so the uh, boot menu, right? Um, Huh. Reproducible system configuration. Um, because it's declarative, you can reproduce the exact system that is on your um, uh, production, or very close to, in your virtual uh, boxes, which you can produce, or uh, virtual machines. So you, your configuration doesn't change that much, except the IPs, IP numbers, and IP addresses, where to deploy. It doesn't change much from development mode to the configuration, right? Uh, to the deployment. Um, huh. It's also safe to test changes. As I said, if I want to upgrade something really crucial, uh, upgrading kernel on Gen 2, for example, for me was always a par, uh, pain in the ass, and I did it once a year, and that was enough. Um, upgrading here the kernel. Uh, I'm not just. I'm just giving kernel as an example, which everybody is afraid to do and to upgrade. It can be any other software, right? It can be just a Firefox, right? I mean, upgrading Firefox, and if you're a web developer and it doesn't work, it's actually a problem, right? So upgrading, um, it's safe, even just to test. Um, 
we source based model with binaries. Um, so I always like to be, uh, for software I really care about, I want to be on the cutting edge, which means, which Gen2 fit nicely into, because uh, it gave me um, uh, the latest ver the so uh, version of software I want to use. So, but on the other hand, uh, it's hard to keep a day job if you're using Gen2, because you're just working with your um, operating system all the time, configuring, compiling, and everything. That's why where the binary support comes uh, in handy is because because of Hydra, our server, it will produce the binaries, so you don't need to waste uh, precious CPU power on compiling stuff. You just have to wait until Hydra built it for you. So, uh, but you can always be on the cutting edge. So, if it doesn't find Hydra, if the Nix doesn't find binary packages on Hydra, it will try to compile it. So, you get be best of both worlds. Um, Mm -hmm. uh, consistency, um, it just brings that once you configure the system, it's consistent uh, in its uh, true whole state. When you usually deploy some um, uh, server, it usually happens that uh, sometimes you're not sure what kind of configuration is across different servers, and because of the clarity way, you can actually bring the whole uh, the whole network of servers into a consistent state uh, from a single configuration uh, file, right? Um, Multi-user package management, yeah, um, that just comes the benefit of using Nix as a package manager. You can install, um, as a non-privileged user, you can install packages without messing up uh, the system configuration and or being exposed to some vulnerabilities. Um, NixDops, as I said, uh, it's a deploying tool to the cloud. Uh, I see some, uh, that's where actually where you see the action coming to life. Uh, we'll, I will show the demo at the end, how, how you can deploy to a virtual box, um, but you can also deploy to Amazon, um, um, what's the other one, uh, Hitzner. Um, so it's like there are many options uh, to choose from. You can also deploy to a physical machine. You just, um, first you need to install NixOS on it, but then you connect to it and you manage your installation from the tool from your laptop. I currently uh, manage just the house computers, like 11 of them uh, for a few uh, friends as well. Uh, just the home cinema and everything, and I do it from my laptop wherever I am. Um, it's just useful because you can say, uh, my friend called me one day and he says like, hey, Firefox is really slow on me. And I was like, okay, I'll just give you uh, Chrome. And I edited it, pushed, and it was installed. Or uh, I think my mom said that she wants to, that the MP3s are not working for some reason. Uh, so I just gave her another um, MP3 player. And it's, I mean, this kind of deployment and management should be done uh, should be fixed, should be embedded into the distribution, right? And not kind of being the, the tools being around, uh, kind of trying to do this for you. So it should, the, like distribution should take care of this, that it's hackable enough that you can do this. So I'm talking about some really cool features. I hope anybody doing system administration really could, can really appreciate uh, features as being so consistent, uh, reliable atomic upgrades um, and so on that I mean it kind of feels like I'm selling you you know um, magic right I mean how the hell does this works um, so I'll try in five minutes uh, quickly ex uh, explain how Nix uh, actually works internally so I don't want to complicate everything so I'll simplify some stuff but uh, here is my try. <laughs> Five minutes. Okay. Every installation that we do, every, descript the, uh, every um, description of a program starts writing as a Nix expression. If you go back to Matavit, uh, 
uh, to your high school, no, that's uh, high school math, yeah, end of it. It's, you, we were all, all learning about deterministic functions, right? So, if you give uh, a function some input, in every time you give the function input, the same input, it will return the same number. The same thing we're trying to do here. So when you, uh, the, when you give, um, for example, when you want to package Firefox, uh, install Firefox, uh, you give it um, input subversion, and when you upgrade subversion, it, will, it should also mean rebuild my, uh, the, also the output of Firefox should be different, right? So expressions, how to install something, are functions. Whenever some, oh, some of the inputs, which are usually the dependencies, right, uh, change, it, it should also rebuild uh, the, the um, expression you're doing. And then from this, so then from this you get the whole dependent, you can figure out the whole dependency tree, all up to the GCC compiler and kernel. And uh, once you get all that, uh, this dependency tree, um, you, can, uh, you can calculate um, the hash which is used uh, to store the, the binary that uh, is produced. So, all the, so when you install something, it, uh, when you install some package, this package will always end up in the so-called nick store, which is a, a folder, right? Uh, so we don't collide when you install two, two, two packages at the same, uh, with the same name and the same version, but different input, right? Um, uh, you actually prepend the hash in front of that name. So it's hash, name of the, um, name of the package, and then the version. And this hash is calculation of all the dependencies and the input of those, de those dependencies, right? So in case of this, I'll give uh, Firefox as an example. Here is the hash that's being uh, installed, and, so, and then the name. And then whenever subversion, whenever subversion gets updated, it will actually, because uh, uh, the built input of building a Firefox is a subversion, uh, for whatever reasons, um, it will install it, it will also install first the subversion, and then link it inside um, um, Firefox, right? And this is how it links all the dependent uh, packages. So your package, uh, your variation of a package is always installed once, right? Um, and then how the user kind of how this gets propagated to the user is that each user on the system uh, has so-called Nix profile, which is uh, then added to, this, to the system path, so you can see it from your command line. Um, so in this case, when you upgrade um, Firefox, it will create new uh, user environment, new user profile, and it will uh, just link to different packages. Um, this means that rollbacking, uh, kind of going to previous versions, only takes milliseconds, right? Because it just has to fix the links from previous installation. Um, so yeah, this is an example of how, um, uh, pro uh, how few uh, user profiles can work together and have the same software installed. Um, yeah. So, I'm not sure if you really got it, how this thing works, but in short, when you, when you install something with Nix, all, everything goes into the slash Nix folder, okay? So, when, if you want to uh, uninstall Nix from your system, you just delete that folder and it's gone, right? It doesn't, it, it's not writing on any slash user path, anything like that. Only slash Nix, so it's, Kind of safe to even try it for you um, on your system. Um, so, and then how do you see this uh, Nix uh, packages install, installed with Nix in your uh, system in your user account? Um, it will just link them in, in 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 before into your path, right? So, um, 
that's my try of explaining in five minutes how Nix works. Uh, but uh, afterwards, you can ask questions, and I'll try to answer if something was really not unclear. Um, uh, so I was, for the last five years, I'm trying to solve packaging in Python for myself, right? Um, that's a dubious task. Nobody could solve it, even some really smart people tried it, and I was looking around, uh, uh, around are there any existing tools? And the only tool that actually makes, made, made sense was Nix. So at the time, it has zero support for Python, or really poor support for Python, and when I started, um, I got it uh, since that time, until, until today, now the Python support for Nix is really good. What I wanted to say is why every uh, language programming uh, is, ha has their own uh, package manager. It doesn't have to be uh, Python. Node has their own, right? I mean, why do they do this? The problems we are solving in each package manager are the same. Why does every distribution has to come with its own package manager, right? Uh, even like in between Debian dis like distributions, there are um, different solutions. And but we are solving the same problem all and all over again. Wouldn't it be cool if you could learn just one tool and then use it everywhere. I mean, that would be like there are times where innovation is good and it will drive the force, right? But at one point, this innovation has to converge. And I hope we are at that stage in our community, uh, in our open source, that this, um, uh, this conversion uh, will happen. Because otherwise, it will be a mess, right? Um, so when... I use Nix primarily, I started using Nix primarily to package my Python, and uh, now I deploy binaries, because uh, that was the, that's what everybody should do, right? So, um, uh, and then if I go further with, uh, probably there, is, there are some uh, Apple users here, um, I always found it, find it um, it kind of brings almost the tears in my eyes when I see such a nice laptop and an operating system, and then uh, and then you have some, uh, you see a guy, oh, let's use Homebrew, let's do, com let's compile, right? I mean, if you want to compile, come on, go and use Gentoo. It's a freaking awesome operating system. But if you want to, you know, it's like you're turning your machine into, uh, uh, how do you say? Um, like a radiator, right? It's like you're heating your room. So, yeah, if you live in a cold country, maybe that's okay, but you shouldn't do this. Like, radiators are meant to be uh, radiators and computers to do stuff. Um, so, binary deployments and binary package managers are, you shouldn't be afraid of them, you should use them. And homebrew is not one of them. So, whoever uses it, please stop for the sake of your health, right? So if you want to give Nix a try, there are also other binary uh, uh, package managers for OS X, but uh, give it, you can give uh, Nix a try um, and see if it works for you. Okay, and then uh, this, uh, this topic right now is gonna be my favorite one. Please stop abusing build out. Whenever you will install Nginx, compile Nginx with build out, or what's, what was the last project I saw? Uh, varnish, compile varnish with uh, build out. I mean, build out was meant for Python packages, downloading and managing them. It's, not do, it's go, doing okay job with it, not the best one, but it was meant for Python. Please never ever use build out to install varnish, right? Use your system packages. Build your own binaries, right? But never use build out, ever. Please. Um, so uh, I'll end my rant because, uh, yeah, I could get quite uh, 
taken away. Um, so uh, where, because maybe I probably I didn't convince you to really switch to Nix and um, kind of give um, Nix a try, but where are the areas which are kind of have a, an easy entry for you that you could actually benefit at this moment after this my after my talk is use Nix to install your basic toolset for Python development. If uh, there is a build out which builds Python, build out.python, I mean that's just sick. It's like you shouldn't be doing this. Like never, please delete it from your uh, computers. If you want to install Python, use Nix. Uh, if you have some uh, special libraries like Pillow, LXML, which depends on some C libraries, so and they are a bit harder to install, use Nix. It will give you the binaries with all with everything needed, and uh, you don't need to worry about right all this. And then you just continue using them as you would with any other Python project. Just use Nix to install them. They are, I'll show you also how you can install Plone and uh, start the development uh, instead of in, I think there are even classes or even some, uh, you, you gave a talk, right Sven? How to install uh, Plone and there are like thousand ways. If you learn this way, you can install Plone on all the operating systems, all distributions with one uh, set of tools, right? Um, it's not, although I don't like build out, I'm like, next year I'm coming with a t-shirt, build out should die, for sure. Um, but you can use it to extend build out. Like, pre-install all the packages um, and pull them with the binaries and then only packages that are not packaged yet with uh, Nix use build out to pull them down and usually they're only Python so you won't have any problems uh, with C compilers and so on, right? So use the hard stuff that Nix already did, it, did for you and use build out because you're, you're familiar with it and it's easy to extend. There is a build out example I'll show at the end so um, uh, wait until then and you'll see that ain't that hard. Um, Another thing is, especially with Plone, I mean, I come from Plone community, so all my problems are seen through this uh, window. Um, Plone has, when you want to show up some cool Plone features, you want to, uh, usually you end up installing uh, XMPP, Solar, um, uh, if you want to show off rel storage, you have to install Postgre, and it's hard to kind of create a documentation for developers coming in and kind of starting the development on it or just giving it a try or kind of demo version, right? You have to install it on your own server and then just here, give it a try. You cannot give them download this and uh, go wild. With Nix and NixOps, uh, it's easy to do uh, virtual box appliances, right? So it's kind of, you're showing off your software by installing it, describing it in a one configure file, and then creating um, a VirtualBox um, appliance. Uh, I think here X, Nix X, X, excels. Uh, and for one thing, I'm definitely going to start doing uh, Plone uh, appliances with some integration with other systems, which is hard to do. Right, and then to show off uh, on each platform. Um, so if there is any Python user which uses um, also uh, NumPy and tools for scientific Python, um, use Nix. Usually at the last PyCon, uh, Python meetup in Barcelona, there was uh, about scientific Python tools. Every half of the talk was about how to install software. And you need this uh, GCC compiler because you need to compile this and then Fortran. And you know there are some tool set which are hard to install. And it shouldn't be that way. And you usually don't know on which system uh, your science, uh, science guy is actually uh, will be using it, right? So 
use Nix, and it will give you binaries. And to install binaries, it's just downloading, extracting, no computation, right? So this is also one of the ways how you can shift your software, uh, ship your software to the, your, your desired clients, developers, or scientific guys. So um, this is kind of it for my talk, but now it's time for demos. Um, and I always do them live, because I think people putting videos are cheating because uh, they're not really showing you the real software. Um, so, and of course, with Nix, um, demos always work, because I can always roll back. Um, <clears throat> okay. Uh, F11. So first, I'm going to um, show you uh, how, can, uh, how can you install Plone on, uh, I think this script was tested on FreeBSD, um, but only 64-bit uh, version. Um, what else? Yeah, Linux 23, any Linux distribution, and OS X. So I'm trying to bootstrap uh, maybe if I start from the build out, you'll be more familiar with it. This is a simple build out, which is everything you're used to if you're doing Plone development. So you put your stuff there, you extend it, however, however you do whatever you want to do, right, with the build out. Um, so it's a Zeo, Zeo server and instance, just configuration. Um, but then with file we just saw before. Uh, um, so this is our Nix, exp Nix expression, which will install uh, Python 2.7 and a Plone. So, um, it's not much to say, because it's just you put this line and all the add-on packages, uh, if there are any or any other Python X, you just start putting them under. And on this folder where you have this devnix file and um, build out CFG, um, maybe that's, this is the make file. Um, I copy this make file all the time, so um, it's just set of commands uh, you need to do. So you basically, in the line five, uh, you build the devnix, which will pull down all the binaries, and um, you activate, uh, you create the virtual environment, and you activate all the X which you installed with Nix into that virtual environment. That's copying that. PTH file um, at line number seven. And then you just, this is a trick, which is just a handy one, easy installing ZC build out, because it will already, uh, uh, build out is already contained in the virtual environment site setup. It will, and if, um, and if the, um, what do you call it? And if the binary build out doesn't exist, it will create it. So I'm just creating bin build out with that line, line number eight. Um, and that's it. So, um, how quickly this actually runs? That was it. Plone was installed. Because I had all the binaries from previous projects already. So, and now the build out is running. Also, the build out actually runs a lot faster because my egg cache uh, is basically empty, right? 
And if you ever did some performance testing, your build out uh, egg cache is when it grows over time, it slows down your build out. Because when you have to list 10 or 20,000 of packages, just listing takes five seconds. Now, how many times you run build out today? Now, multiply with five seconds and multiply that with every day you do the build out, and you'll get how many time uh, you waste. I mean, I don't like to wait, so. Um, that's why I use Nix. Um, now, uh, and next demo I'm going to do is um, I'm going to create a Nix appliance with few um, with configuring Plone instance, with Varnish, um, what else? Nginx, um, OpenSSH, and stuff like that. So this is an example of how the deployment looks like um, the, for um, dev Nix, uh, Nix ops. So it actually you just say which services you want to uh, able, which is I want to disable X server, um, so because you don't need it on the server. Um, I want to able open SSH, so I could connect to it, um, and then I able I create one instance of Plone. Um, here I list which packages I want to have in Plone. Um, I give it an address. And then here, go down. It's like the ZODB mount point. I mean, this could all look nicer. Just for me, this is enough. So I kind of don't even bother. Um, just creating a blob storage. Same old stuff we do with Plone recipe, ZOP2 instance, right? Um, so this is on port. This will be running on port uh, 9000. Then the next thing I promised I'm going to do is um, uh, configure varnish. Easy, varnish able true, uh, and you pass the same configuration that is usually created by Plone recipe varnish. Um, and the varnish you just assign it that it will run on port number 9001. And here, I'm actually saying that our backend is running on port 9000, which is Plone instance, right? So, uh, hooking this up to So, um, I'm just inlining here the configuration, but this could be in a separate file, living next to this. Mm. And then Nginx, Nginx able true. Um, and you don't have to worry about anything. You just provide the configuration, which needs to go there. And yeah. Um, so you kind of, it's for people using build out, it's just a way how uh, it's, you could do this, the same thing, uh, the same explanation, what to install with build out in one way or another. So just the syntax is different. But the conceptually, everything is the same. You provide. Uh, options how to install and what to install, where to install, uh, using a uh, configuration like this. Um, I think that's it. So, to run this, So I'm deploying um, in a different file. Um, I'm just showing you the interesting bit, but I defined that our my deployment should happen on VirtualBox. Um, so I'm running it. Um, so it created the VirtualBox image. The same could happen pushing to the code to Hitzner or um, um, what's the Hitzner or Amazon, right? Um, it it builds the binary files on your own on the on the host system and then push pushes them to the production system, right? So you're basically I'm pushing them from here, right? Uh, and that's it. 
it built and um, It was done for example.com, so, and it, that's why it's not showing up. But the uh, server is, uh, the clone is being deployed now in, a, in an instance, so you can just click and then create appliance. Um, that's it for, from my side. Um, questions, if any. So you go to you go to Nix packages. Uh, you change the number and rerun everything. Yeah, it's that easy. <laughs> I mean, it's you just how Nix expression looks. It's always you're describing how to install. So, like it has all already some tools which are there for you to help you, but and you just use them like inside Nix, right? Yes, Hydra is uh, available. Just for we will. I'm actually gonna. Uh, we are setting up Hydra that will build all Python packages. So outside of this, so to have all the binaries for all Python packages, that wouldn't be bad, right? Yeah, it, so it won like, I think like four or five years ago, it came <coughs> to attention to the Debian or somebody wrote to the mailing list. And basically the only argument, except for from like being dicks, um, was that it's Nix as a package manager, it's not storing anything in slash user. So it's, um, what's that? I forgot the acronym. Uh, it's breaking the, yeah, it's like the Unix structure of folders, but it has reasons why it does that. So um, that was the only argument. And the others were like, yeah, or they were um, valid at the time and they are fixed now. Um, so yeah, at that time when um, Nix uh, uh, people, uh, when they were discussing Debian, uh, inclusion Nix into Debian, there were not, there was no Nix OS. So then, because nobody was using it, and we wanted to use it on, um, in a real distribution. Okay. Uh -huh. One more. Yes, Nix is also packaged inside Debian packages. And if I do that, can I then also use this deployment thing? Yes. Um, um, one really, I forgot to mention actually, one really useful install for, um, who among you is system administrator? Okay. Have you worked with really old systems like CentOS 7.2? Because you just got it somewhere from, yeah, I mean, I usually when you, especially if you have some contract with universities, right, they're really cheap on upgrading and keeping up to date, right? So, uh, I think it should be running, but don't take, not sure. Uh, but, so, and you wanna use just, 
I don't know, inspect a package, uh, you want to um, inspect the network, right? And to install some tools on a machine which is seven or eight years old, you would need to upgrade the repositories. I mean, thousand things, right? Now, w when what you can do is actually install Nix, because there are binaries also for Nix. You just extract them and it's working. You can install Nix and you can install everything else with Nix, like the new stuff that you need. So there is, like, if you need to work with up-to-date tools on an old systems, Nix OS it will save your ass. So to answer, like, Debian, you can give it a try. Same with uh, this Apple OS X. Um, not a problem. Especially if you have any problems, like, contact me. It's probably a common line away from getting it working. Okay, thank you. <laughs>